The New York Mets were expecting a lot from Max Scherzer in his start on Tuesday, and they did not get what they anticipated. The Mets have now lost their last two games by a combined score of 19 to nothing. Is this rotation too old to contend this year? We're going to discuss that on today's edition of Locked On Mets. You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all you amazing Mets fans. You're watching Locked On Mets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Ryan Finkelstein. If you want to find my work, follow me on Twitter at Finkelstein Ryan. You can also find some of my writing at JustBaseball.com, where I work as the managing editor. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment matter more by visiting FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And the Mets got blown out again. Two games in a row where they've essentially gotten mercy ruled or they should have been mercy ruled based on how much they were destroyed. 10-0, then 9-0. And the pitching from their starters has been atrocious. Carlos Carrasco goes out. Unable to get outs at the end of that start, has to be pulled. Starts just giving up some bombs. And you look at a dip in velo for Carrasco. A little bit concerning. We'll get to that in a bit. Scherzer tonight goes out. First inning. Gives up a couple of singles. Is trying to work around it. Brian Anderson, who's killing the Mets in this series, ends up driving in two with a double. But then Scherzer, he settles in. He was good in the second, good in the third, good in the fourth, good in the fifth, put up zeros, get to the sixth inning, and Scherzer needs to give this team length. What happens? Again, the home run ball gets him, although it didn't get him in the first inning, but it certainly got him against the Marlins when he gave up that two-run shot to Soler. He ends up giving up a home run to none other than, you guessed it, Brian Anderson. Actually, no, Anderson... I apologize. Anderson at the second of three home runs. Three home runs allowed. I apologize. I didn't remember that exactly right. Three in a row, Max Scherzer gave up in this start. Rowdy Telez hit the first one, 109.9 miles per hour off the bat, 422 feet. Starts off 0-1, okay, so he's ahead, and just throws him a hanging curveball. 74.9 miles per hour, basically center cut, just drops Right into his bad path. Telez identifies it. Bomb. Okay. All right. You're you're giving up three runs. Not a bad start from Scherzer. It's okay. If he had just cut the bleeding there, got through the six, you still pat him on the back. Goes up against Brian Anderson, who, again, killing the Mets in this series. Former Marlin. Anyone who's a former player from this division that goes elsewhere always seems to come back to haunt the Mets. Scherzer gets ahead 0-2. So he's sitting pretty. Throws a slider off the plate. You know, Anderson spits on it. Throws a fastball that honestly was center cut. Anderson fouls it off. Throws a curveball. Good pitch. In. Tough for the righty. He fouls it off. Gets a piece of it. Throws another fastball that wasn't competitive way off the plate. So now he's sitting 2-2. Goes to a slider and a hanger. 83 miles per hour. You know, Pretty much center cut, a little bit high, but basically center cut right where he wants it, belt high, deposits it into the seats. Now you're just screwed at this point. 4 nothing Brewers. Feeling horrible, right? Well, it can't get any worse. You need length out of Max Scherzer. That's why you didn't pull him, because you're trying to get some length out of a out of a team that's way too tired this early when it comes to their bullpen. Now, the last home run, you look at the, the first one, as I said, from Telesla's, you know, 109 off the bat. You look at Anderson's, 106.7 off the bat. The last home run was not the most impressive. 362 feet, 95 miles per hour off the bat. He was ahead 1-2 and two on Garrett Mitchell. And it wasn't a terrible pitch. I mean, it was a cutter that got some, some plate on the inner half, but he just turns on it. 
and perfect swing gets a barrel on it and it haunts him and then boom five nothing he walks a batter they get him out of there they put in Denny Reyes who gets the Mets out of that jam Denny Reyes joins the roster because Tommy Hunter hit the IL I feel like I made a comment on yesterday's show where I said you know one way you can get an arm up is by having Tommy Hunter hit the IL with a back thing exactly what happened back spasms he's out I almost think that Tommy Hunter has extra option ability for a guy that doesn't have options because I feel like at any time you could say he has a back injury and get him on the IL and get a fresh arm. That's what the Mets did. But, you know, it was just a bad start from Scherzer to give up five, not get through six. And then to make matters worse, the next inning, you throw Brooks Raley out there, which I thought they might get some more length out of Denny Reyes. They go to Raley to face Christian Yelich, try to keep the game close. He gives up a hit uh, to, to Yelich, another one to Adamas, two runners on, gets two outs in the inning. Brian Anderson hits another freaking home run, killing the Mets, absolutely killing them. Then Garrett Mitchell homers again. So those two guys go back-to-back twice. It's back-to-back-to-back and then, you know, back-to-back. And you're losing 9 nothing in the Mets you know, can't come back from that one. So obviously the offense needs to step up more, but the pitching has just been awful. And now you're just trying to escape Milwaukee with a win problem. You're going against Corbin Burns, who did get knocked around his last time out, but you know, Corbin Burns got knocked around in his first start last season as well. Found a way to, to get back to being the pitcher that he's been, which is an awesome one. And a Cy Young in 2021, not going to be easy for the Mets to even salvage one here and just got to hope that they can take advantage of the Marlins this weekend and get back into that win column in a big way. We'll see what happens with the final day game, but this does lead me to ask the question, is this staff too old? Are the Mets just filled with too many guys late in their careers and this might be a bad season because you're already seeing injuries hit your elder staff with two of them and the other two have been rocky? We're going to get to that in just a minute. Before we do, though, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The NBA playoffs are almost here. Now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because new customers are going to get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, it's secure, it's super easy to use. Now you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores to three points drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. You can also bet an MLB game. So, you want to do a same-game parlay, you can bet on David Peterson over on strikeouts. Pete Alonso hit a home run. And the Mets to win and make a lot of money on you know a $10 bet if you want. So, all of that is available for you. Don't miss your chance to get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. And bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Is the Mets starting rotation too old? This is a question that I think a lot of people were asking this offseason and one that I brushed off pretty quickly because look at the numbers last year on all these guys. For Verlander, 175 ERA to lead all of baseball. Scherzer was, I think, 2.33 off the top of my head. Carrasco had a decent season, was a 397, and Quintana was in the twos, if I'm not mistaken. So you had all these vets, but you felt good about them. Right now, what we're seeing is concerning. Now, I'm not gonna look at Max Scherzer's two starts where you know he gives up a home run late to the Marlins that kind of colored it, and then he gave up these three home runs that really colored in a bad way what he just did. Uh, but and then just kind of assume that this is who he's going to be, that he's given up home runs every start. Four home runs to start the season is shocking for Max Scherzer. So I think this is something that could continue. I don't think that he's going to have a bad year. I think he's still going to be good more times than he's not. But if this is a problem for him suddenly, where when he's off, he's leaving pitches middle that are off speed that guys can tee off on, That could come back to haunt you in a massive way come October. And the one thing I am concerned about a little bit when it comes to Scherzer and even Justin Verlander is the fact that even though their stuff is still good and they are, 
you know, intellectually so ahead. They could just be so cerebral and, and work their way through starts and plot out the spots in the lineup they can attack, where they can save pitches, where they can rack up the strikeouts. You know, th- they're so good at analyzing bat pass and being able to make adjustments. So I still think that over a large scale of the season, they're going to be good. I do wonder what happens when you get into a, a shortened sample size of October and they have to face off against lineups that are great one through nine. That's something that worries me a bit. Where you know, I was a guy that was campaigning for the return of Jacob deGrom. And once the contract came out, I backed off on it because that was a lot of money the Rangers shelled out. And I understand the Mets not committing to him. But if Jacob deGrom is healthy this year, he's a guy you don't question about being a playoff pitcher. So that is always one element that I look at the age of the Mets rotation, and I always had those concerns. It wasn't about the regular season. It was October. Now you're seeing some issues in the regular season that concern me with Scherzer, and Verlander's hurt. Then you throw in Carlos Carrasco. Okay, he looked very much his age, and that velo dip is scary. It's one start. It's one start. We can't overreact to it, but it gets compounded by Scherzer being bad too. Now you look back at this series and man, does that Carrasco start look worse because Scherzer was bad. And then you're 0-2 in this series staring down the barrel of a sweep with Corbin Burns on the mound. It just compounds the issue. So you you got Carrasco at 36, Scherzer at 38, Verlander at 40, and Jose Quintana at 34 who has a rib issue, so he's now out until the break at least. The Mets need David Peterson and Tyler McGill in a massive way because I can make the argument that you know when this rotation is at its best this year, it's not going to include Carrasco in it. It might not include Quintana in it. I don't know. I, I think that the upside that the youth allows you to have makes me Look at Peterson and McGill and just think, man, those guys, a lot of the Mets season is going to hinge on them probably more than we ever really anticipated. And I think Peterson is up for the task. I'm concerned about McGill's control, but if he can figure that out, we'll see. The Mets really need these guys because youth is not on their side across the rest of the rotation. Even Kodai Sanga is in his 30s as a rookie here. So I think the Mets are in a good place still overall. I'm not jumping off the ship because of two bad games. Um, And I said ship there. Although the other word is pretty fitting. Uh, You know, Verlander and Scherzer, I think will be okay, but I'm concerned about the health. And I'm concerned about the home runs now on Scherzer. You know, if he has a season where he gives up, you know, 15 homers, and he only needs to give up 11 more the rest of the year to get to that number. No, that ERA is certainly not going to be sitting in the low twos. So if you have a 3-5 Scherzer, that's a little bit different than what you might have been expecting. Get Verlander back. I'm okay with it. Carrasco, we'll see what happens there. I could very well see him losing that spot in the rotation. Um, you know, He's going to have it for a while. When Verlander comes back, he'll still have it. McGill will probably be the first one that's optioned. But if he continues to struggle and McGill's pitching well in Syracuse, don't be shocked if he can lose his spot as well. Maybe Carlos Carrasco is the long man for the Mets. I I don't know. I don't know. Time will tell. I don't think this rotation is too old. But the age is certainly something to monitor, and it could be an issue. So right now, giving them a free pass early in the season, but definitely something that could worry you, especially... When the youth movement may be delayed as well. Brett Beatty ends up getting hurt. Going to discuss that in just a minute. Before we do though, today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Baseball GM. This is the best mobile game out there. If you want to live out your dreams of being an MLB GM, this is the game for you. where You can manage every strategic aspect of your team and play through a season start to finish. Lead your team to glory. You're responsible for hiring the right coaches and staff, managing team finances, scouting and drafting players, managing difficult personalities, navigating your franchise through free agency and all the ups and downs of a season. All of this in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Baseball GM is completely free and playable offline so you can play on the go as you want, when you want. Once downloaded, you don't need Wi-Fi to play. It's all available and at play. 
Locked On Mets listeners will get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On in the game store. So make sure to check it out. To download the game, just visit probaseballgm.com, scan the code, or look it up on the app stores. That's probaseballgm.com. Check out the Ultimate Baseball GM. Start your dynasty today. Now, I know there's probably some of you today that got the news that Brett Beatty was pulled from a AAA game with an injury and thought, this is Ryan's fault, he jinxed him. And the reason why I know that is because my dad, who's always the pulse of the Mets fan base for me, called me and said that I jinxed him. So, I'm sorry, I guess. I was discussing Brett Beatty on yesterday's show. I've been discussing Brett Beatty a bunch. And then, of course, this is the ultimate result of what happens to him. Not because of me, because baseball is a tough and ironic sport at times. And unfortunately, this is an injury to his thumb. The same thumb he got surgery on at the end of last season that cut his year short. Now I'm going to say something that I never thought I'd say. Very happy Brett Beatty is not on the Major League roster accruing service time getting hurt, okay? That's one thing that I will say ends up being a happy byproduct here, but I'm very concerned about this one. There's really no, you know, update. He's going to get an MRI, get some imaging done, and we'll see what happens. Worst case scenario, he needs surgery on that thumb again, and if this becomes an ongoing issue with Brett Beatty, thumb issues for a hitter, not good. Not good at all. Hopefully, it's a sprain that he has to just wait out. But even then, we don't know the timetable here. So this definitely gives Eduardo Escobar a longer leash. And honestly, because of this injury, everything I said on yesterday's show, you almost throw away because imagine, let's just say, soft you know, landing spot. It's two weeks for Brett Beatty. To get back on the field. Let's just say that's what it is. And hey, maybe it's nothing. He's back, you know, starting next week. But let's just say it's two weeks. That takes you to April 19th. Okay, now you want to get a 25 game sample size under your belt. So let's just add, you know, four weeks to that, right? That takes you to the 26th of April, the 3rd of May, the 10th, the 17th. Well, now you got that 25 game sample. You're sitting two weeks away from a year of service time at that point. So I think this injury probably does, you know, get to the point where we might not see Beatty at the big league level for a while. And that just puts more pressure on Eduardo Escobar, Louis Giorme to step up at third base. And also this lineup in general to step up. Uh, you know, they, they've been struggling the last couple of days here and left handed pitching. Something that could be a concern yet again for them, which then leads you back to the road of wondering how long do you keep Mark Vientos away from this club? Um, and where would he fit into a lineup? Because I think Tommy Pham is going to get some run for a while now. Is that a direct thing where those two guys can't share a roster? Or if the Mets continue to struggle against left-handed pitching, when do they make some other type of move with the Tim LaCastro to get some more juice in that lineup? It's tough to to see where this season is going to go as we're so early early out here. But kind of all the questions and concerns that we might have had in spring, unfortunately, are currently showing up on the field. And so we'll just see how quickly this Mets team can show that resilience. We saw all of last year bounce back. They can win the final game of this series against the Brewers. I'm going to feel very good about this still being that same team from last year. Then you go out and you win a series against the Marlins this weekend. Guess what? You can still have a 500 week and you know rest your head on the pillow on Sunday and feel pretty good about your New York Mets. So we'll see uh, you know what comes from here. One more day game in Milwaukee, then back home for the opener. As always, though, thank you for listening. Make sure you follow, rate, and review wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Finkelstein Ryan. Follow the show at Locked On Mets. Thank you for making Locked On Mets. Your first listen every day now for your second listen. Check out Locked On Fantasy Baseball if you want to win your league this year. That's where you got to go every day. Uh, you can find them wherever you get your podcasts on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.